The leader for eighth team was Saber. The healer, Aid. The hitter, Greco. The stealth, Shroud. The brain, Oracle. And the anchor, Newton. Saber seemed happy he was a leader, but wanted a better team than eight. He smiled and told Coach Infernal he was honored just the same. Shroud did not smile. As an Israeli on a team with five Muslims, she was uncertain of her place on her future team. Dr. DeClute folded up her notebook and looked on at the new teams. We will be dining here at 1800. I'm sure by now you know that it's 6 p.m. Until then, please equate yourself with your new coaches and teammates. As Dr. DeClute turned to leave, Coach Connor said, Thank you, Dr. DeClute. He started a round of clapping that everyone joined. Once the clapping stopped, the six students of first team looked at their mentor for some signal of what to do next. Everyone gather your things. I'll show you to your home for the next six years, Connor said with a British accent. The six gathered their things as the other students stood around and chatted with their new coaches. Coach Connor stood at the entrance to the hotel waiting for everyone to gather their things. Soon, they were on their way. They followed their silent coach down the central way toward the pit. Before they were halfway there, the coach turned left and the six followed him to a large building. They walked up to the center of the building and entered. The large room in front of them looked like the hotel reception area, only no desks. In each of the four corners of the room were wide steps leading up to balconies above them. We are now in the center of the gold dormitory. All eight teams will stay here. The building is shaped in a large H pattern, four wings off of the central room. There are four levels to the building. You have the second floor of the first wing here to the right for your dorm. Connors pointed to broad stairs leading up. Second team is on the first floor. First and second coaches have flats. Apartments on the top floor, close to the students. The lower level is for storage, maintenance, and right beneath us is your student cafeteria. Let's go up to your dorms. The students walked up the stairs to a large steel door. Connors opened the door and ushered them inside. The large concrete room was over 60 feet in length. It had 20-foot ceilings, fluorescent lights, a few tables, a few chairs, and nothing else. As you can see, the last team that occupied this common room took everything with them. Look to the outside walls and you'll see six other doors. The bedrooms on the other side of them are all identical in size. Go ahead and sort out the one you want for yourselves. Later, we can see about fixing up the common room. Darkspeed thought he should be leader-like. How about we start here, at the door closest to the main entrance, and call this the leader's room, and go clockwise from here according to the order pick. They're all the same size, so that's fine with me, Virtuoso said. Go ahead and put your things on your bed and come back here, Connor said. The students walked into their rooms and were pleasantly surprised. A large bed with new blankets and pillows, walk-in closet, private bathroom, computer, video phone, and a bay window were inside. The students returned quickly and Connors addressed them. You are no longer children, or kids, or cadets, or students, nor any other such nonsense you may have been addressed by. You are alphas and nothing less. I expect you to act like it and nothing less. Some of you are wondering how I came to recruit you before the HU could. The answer is simple. Part of my job is to have a nose for talent. I learned everything I need to know about you before you arrived. So I suppose it's only fair you know something about me. I started my career as a superhero before the Coalition's War, and I fought during it. I fought alongside Omni and other big names you've heard of. Omni commissioned me to lead the effort to build this place. He then appointed me first coach 28 years ago. Since then, every team I've been in charge of has maintained first status. Upon graduation, they are assigned to the most important post, Tokyo, London, and Los Angeles. Those teams have set the standard, a standard you will have to raise. Connors looked closely at the six alphas. Do you have any questions for me? Olympian raised a hand. Connors nodded to him. You know Omni? How old are you? Most of what I know I learned from Omni before the war. During the war, I fought alongside him, more often than not. As for how old I am, I'm 51. Once I reached maturity, I started aging very slowly. What was your superhero handle? Fileforce asked. I'll tell you the truth on almost everything you ask me, but my identity is still secret. Any answer I give you would just be something to mislead you. So instead, I just won't answer that question. Do we have to keep our identity secret from each other? Virtuoso asked. Excellent question. No, and I encourage you to spend this weekend getting to know each other. But this is also training for you. I want you to tell the people in this room your identity and no one else. Anyone outside this room learns your real names and you fail the secret identity test. When, how, and why did you choose us? 
Darkspeed asked. When varies. I chose she before a birth certificate was filed. I chose Midas just a few weeks ago. How is a matter of knowing how to ferret information better than the other coaches of the HU? I have hacked more computers and asked more questions than all the other coaches combined. I pride myself on being the first to spot talent. Why is easy. I know how to put teams together. You will fit together like a watch and everything will work itself out. I thought I was a brain, Midas stated. You're an anchor. But the other anchors are more combat oriented. Mine is more like the brains. You need to trust me. You're an anchor. You may need to grow into it. Remember, I haven't been wrong in 30 years and I'm not wrong about you. Also, put the inhaler in the bin. What? The trash. Midas didn't say anything back. He was just happy to get rid of the inhaler and decided to take the rest on faith. Not that I'm not grateful to be chosen as a leader, but how do you know I'll make a good leader? Darkspeed asked. I don't. You can't be 100% certain that anyone will have the indefinable quality like leadership lurking in them somewhere. Some things you just have to make your best, most educated guess and then hope for the best. On you, I'm trusting my instincts. The bedrooms look nice, but this common room looks like a prison. How do we get stuff to decorate? Virtuoso asked. Connor stood and smiled at the Brazilian girl. You find something online that you want, and I'll find a way to get it for you. Now, you need to get back to dinner with Dr. DeClue. I'll join you there shortly. The office walked down the stairs and Connors walked up to the top floor in his room. First team exited the dorms and started to walk back to the hotel. If we're living in there for the next six years, something has to be done to that common room. It looks like a car park, Virtuoso said. Do you think he really fought with Omni during the war? Olympian asked. When I met Kodiak, he wanted to know who recruited me at 11 years old. When my rep told him, he looked at me different. He picked me up and walked me to the port. He even told me stories on the way, Midas said. So you think Kodiak knows Coach Connors? Darkspeed asked. When he knew who recruited me, it was like a switch flipped and he was interested in me. Well, little guy, if Coach says you're an anchor, you're an anchor. You were able to score 10 plus for damage on the firing range. Maybe you'll get better at combat, Olympian said. You better. During combat simulations, you'll have to measure up to Ion, the second anchor, she said. Yeah, no pressure or anything. Virtuoso said as she pushed Midas' shoulder. Can we tell each other our real names now? Bioforce asked. No, someone like me might be listening. Our dorm rooms might be better for that. The walls and door are soundproof, she said. How would you know? Olympian asked her. I'm first stealth, I know. As first team neared the hotel, Connors flew up on them from behind. The six turned around to see him landing a few feet behind them and then walking with them. He had changed into dress clothes for dinner. Were we supposed to dress up that much? I didn't bring anything that dressy with me, Darkspeed asked Connors. Just dress your best. Later, we'll make sure you have formal wear for special occasions. What about costumes? Bioforce asked. Connors opened the door to the hotel. That's a topic for another day. Right now, be on your best behavior. The seven entered the hotel and moved to the dining room. The other teams were sitting at their tables talking to their coaches. All the other teams saw them walk back in. Dinner was pleasant and uneventful. During dinner, Coach Connors had told them to hold questions and practice being sociable. Dr. DeClute joined them for dinner, but sat with some people from the HU. After dinner, Dr. DeClute addressed them again. 